Will putting a heat sink on your VTX significantly drop those temperatures? Let's find out. Here are the two VTXs we'll be working with today. This one here on my uh, CBS 160 here is the ATX03 made by Ishin. It is a 25, 15, 200 milliwatt uh, VTX that runs off, I think, anywhere from 5 to 7 volts. It doesn't take uh, battery voltage. And over here we have a full size SP2 made by Ditone. This is a 0 0.05, 25, and 200 milliwatt variable power um, VTX that we'll be running off of uh, 3 cell to test out how hot it gets. And to cool those off, we have some heat sinks here. Got a larger one for this board and a smaller one to go on top of our uh, this board here. And to hold those on, we're going to use this, uh, I believe it's the same people that make the Arctic Silver uh, PC or CPU thermal compound, but this is a thermal compound, but epoxy thermal compound that we'll mix half and half together and mix up. And this should give us a pretty strong um, bond to put these on. It does, these do come with these little pads, which um, I do not recommend. They, they're, they're not the grace at holding them on. So for, the, for, the, for those crashes and bangs, we'll uh, use this compound here. And uh, I'll have a link down below in the uh, in the uh, description to where you can find these on Amazon. So enough talk about this, I'm going to start hooking up some power to both these uh, VTXs here and see if we can find out how hot these guys are running before this modification. Alright so we're looking at about a maximum heat of about 81 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot so be interesting to see how much we can get that drop down. And here is the little heat sink we'll be putting on it and in case you're wondering it is four millimeters tall and to get a weight of it real quick just to see how much you'll be adding to your little quad and we'll only be adding about 0.6 grams with this so not bad so let's go ahead and get a temperature reading on our sp2 all right so here we got our sp2 on for and it's been running for about three and a half four minutes and we do have it set on 200 milliwatt which should put out the most heat in this uh top part here. So let's get a measurement of what our maximum temperature is real quick. So we're looking at 42 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite surprising because some of the older um, SP3 boards I was running were actually running way hotter than that. So I'm actually quite impressed that's that cool. Um, pretty much don't even need to cool this, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to do it anyway. And that's going to be this guy right here. And this is measuring, I believe, a little bit taller than the last one. So this one's running about 6.2 millimeters tall. Now I did sound the top of this off just a little bit, just to kind of bring it down, just on a sanding block. But you can use a file also. I just brought it down a little bit. And I did the same thing to uh, the little one also, if I can find it here real quick. And here's the other one too that I sounded down. And that one it didn't go down as much I believe it went down maybe about a millimeter so um, that's just to bring it down a little bit because I don't think I think it was a little overkill to have the whole amount on there but anyway let's get a quick measurement of what we're running at real quick so we add about a gram and a half and the original one is maybe it's, it's ne negligible not much so anyway so now we'll be taking our thermal paste here mixing it up and we'll be putting it on top of the boards here. So for this one, we'll be gluing it on this part right here. This is where all the heat comes out of. So we'll glue this one on, be on just like that. Here's the SP2. It already has kind of a heat sink on top. It's got this aluminum plate on here. We're gonna get this pride off here real quick. And here's this one. Here we got a little bit of our glue on there already. And we're going to be gluing it pretty much the same way. We're going to be gluing it here and here. And I believe that little guy right there might get some glue on it. But it'll be going on just like this. And we'll see what temperature range we can get. So I've gone ahead and cleaned the top of this guy right here and the top of these um, guys on here. And I've also cleaned the bottom of our heat sinks here with some alcohol on the Q-tip. Make sure we get a good adhesion surface there. And now we're just going to mix, mix together some of this uh, thermal epoxy. Now you will have about five minutes of work time. 
So you gotta be kinda quick. Alright, so we got just a very thin layer put on there, because we don't want a whole bunch on there, because uh, the smaller amount is actually better for the heat to go through. And we're gonna make sure we push it on pretty good, get it all smeared out, pushed out on the sides, and that looks like it will be good for that one. And for this one, I've already got just a little bit on each one. This is not conductive, so you don't have to worry about getting onto your circuits and uh, shorting them out. All right, now we've got that one glued in. So we'll let this sit overnight and we'll see what temperatures we're running tomorrow. So we have our SP2 here. It's been on for about four minutes and we're going to give a temperature reading here real quick. And I want to add real quick that the epoxy fully set up on here is very solid, much stronger than before. So let's get a quick reading here. I don't think we're going to have much of a difference at all, but um, let's see what we got. So we're looking at 40 degrees. Now that's not much of a gain or a decrease, I should say, over the 40 degrees Celsius. I'm not really surprised. And I'm not even sure, too sure if that previous reading was very accurate because um, these normally, in my uh, experience, do run hotter than that. But we do have a, a drop, so let's get that ATX03 tested out because I'm really interested to see what that's going to be. All right, we've had our ATX03 plugged in here for about four minutes. Now let's get a reading of our temperature and see what we're looking at. So it looks like 70 degrees Celsius. Now that is 11 degree increase, or excuse me, decrease, which um, that will help efficiency a little bit to run smoother. Now I'm, I'm willing to bet that once you get these running and going through the air, the increased surface um, here of the heat sink is probably going to do a better job of cooling this and probably go down a few degrees even more than it normally would without it. So, is it worth putting heat sinks on your VTXs? Eh, maybe. I would say if your VTX is running over probably 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, this would actually probably be a good idea just to help bring it down a bit. Well, I hope you're able to take something out of this video. Now, I have to admit, this was not my idea. This is something I've read about before and I really wanted to try it and put it on video for all you guys to see. And if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really liked it, please check out the link below to racedayquads.com. I have an affiliate program through them, and they're all really awesome to buy from. So if you make any purchases with them, it would help me out tremendously. I'm Corey with Crash Burn Racing, and thank you for watching.